now from the Student Union on the campus of UW-La Crosse, it's the Mike Schmidt Football Show. The Mike Schmidt Football Show is brought to you by Honda Motor Works, your electric, natural gas, and hybrid vehicle headquarters at 4th and Cass, La Crosse. By Schilling Supply, serving businesses with critical supplies since 1897. Schumacher Kish Funeral and Cremation Services in La Crosse, La Crescent, and Onalaska. And Associated Bank. Experience the better side of banking at Associated Bank. Now, here's your host of today's program, Terry Erickson. Well, welcome to UW La Crosse. We're in the beautiful Entertainment Cafe here in the Student Union for the Mike Schmidt Football Show here on KQEG. The show is live on the stream and played back every Tuesday on KQEG at 6.30 p.m. We also want to thank our fans that are here in support of the Mike Schmidt Football Show and Eagle Football. Many fam familiar faces again this week. Well, and now the star of the show. Hey, fresh off. Yeah, fresh off. An incredible win yep. at Stevens Point, an evening game uh, against a team that you hadn't beaten since 2013, a team that's ranked, a team that uh, everyone's talking about, the resurgence of point football, a statement game for UWL. Yeah, it really was. And, you know, hey, first of all, hats off to, uh, to, to Stevens Point and, and what they put on with the pink game uh, and, and all the money they donated. They donated over $52,000 uh, to, to local charities to support breast cancer research. So great job by them. Again, as always, they did a great job honoring uh, Zach, Zach Schradel's mother, Diane, after the game with us. So uh, class act uh, by Coach Jernell and, and a great job by those guys. But uh, certainly a huge win for our football program. A uh, huge win for this team. I told the seniors, uh, I went around to, to all of those guys and talked to them about just how, how I, I felt so good for them because in 2015 they walked off that field and it was a tough, tough loss for them and, and it wasn't great. And these guys had all stuck it out. Uh, persevered through all of it, believed in what we're trying to do here now, get to walk off with such a great feeling on Saturday night after really a dominating win. And uh, just so happy for the players and uh, for the coaching staff, what, what, what they were able to do. Came out and executed exactly how we wanted to, and it, it really couldn't have gone uh, any better for well, us. Well, it's quite obvious that you spent a great deal of time preparing, and of course, pre preparation leads to success. A rare evening game. Did the players enjoy that? Yeah, I think so. You know, we had the we had the six o'clock game at uh, against Luther on that Saturday night to open up. Uh, so we had a little bit of an idea on how those things would go. We actually have three of them this year. We got another one coming up, obviously at, at Whitewater next week uh, uh, after, on that Friday night. But um, I think they did a great job handling it, getting some sleep on Oktoberfest weekend. Uh, I'm sure a lot of them had roommates that were out and walking in the door at, at 1, 2 o'clock in the morning. So it actually worked out really good on that end that they got a chance to sleep in a little bit later on Saturday morning and, and get up there and had a great day. Great, tr great trip, uh, as always, with Coach, Coach Anderson doing the food for yes, us. Yes, yeah. Well, he's famous for that. Yes. And no injuries from that game. Yeah, we walk out completely healthy. Uh, we got some guys that, that are still a little nicked up from some of the stuff that they've been dealing with, but uh, we're, we're really healthy actually coming out of that thing. So even for how physical of a game that was and, and doing it uh, really came out really nicely. So feel good about where we're at right now as a team and, and got to get them back and, and ready to go. Well, let's, let's break down the game starting yeah. with uh, the first quarter with Trenton Smith on a two yard run, uh, six plays, 18 yards followed by, in, yet in the first quarter, Tarek Yegi to uh, Nick Holcomb, 13-0 after one. Stunned the, the point players, fans, coaches, uh, no one would expect it that. Yeah, and, and really, uh, it started off right off the bat, the first play of the game that we had uh, defensively. You know, the first part of that first quarter went back and forth a little bit. A couple punts exchanged between each side. Uh, but uh, that first play of the game defensively, they tried to take a shot on our, our field corner, Colton Neiman. Uh, he breaks the pass up, does a great job, kind of set the tone for how the defense was going to play the rest of the day. And then uh, really Ryan Weber comes up with a huge uh, forced fumble and, and recovers his own uh, forced fumble and sets up that, that first touchdown by Trent. And that's really how we got that thing going then and, and felt really good about where the defense was at. Nick looked about as good as he could uh, coming off the line of scrimmage. Tyreek hits him perfectly in stride for the big strike to give us that two-score lead going into the second quarter. Uh, really a, a tremendous start for the team coming out of it. Exactly. So the defense set it up as uh, expected. Then a Cole Speaker, who will be our guest later on, catch resulting in a 12 yards, 21-0. Just like that. Yeah, it was really, uh, you know, we just, every, it seemed like everything we did really kind of uh, 
uh, kind of worked out. Uh, we, we missed the extra point on our second touchdown. Cole scores to make it 19. We fake the extra point. Great execution there. Uh, get the two-point conversion. Make it 21. Get them to punt again. And, uh, and then that sets up really the biggest drive of the game right before half. Uh, going down and, and scoring right before a half. design fake or was it uh, an audible as uh, red red or no, it was designed uh, Yep, yeah, we knew it was going to be there and uh, perfectly executed by the guys really that one kind of you know that one really set our guys into a tizzy and, and really it was hard for them to recover out of out of that drive there second half begins with a Troy Bailey run 72 yard drive impressive drive uh, at the end of three 35 six whoa yeah, we felt pretty good about where we were at. I mean, you come out of half, and we talked about it at halftime, that coming out of the half, the most important drive for the defense was that first drive, getting the ball back for the offense. We do just that. The offense goes down, puts, the, puts it in, and, uh, and then we're sitting in pretty good shape. You know, we had the two, uh, the two offensive scores that we give up. Uh, the defense put, put, posts the shutout for it, but, uh, uh, boy, coming out of that third quarter, we were just – we, had, we were in the driver's seat, and we let them back in with that, with that pick six that we allowed to give them some life. But just the defense comes up with another huge turnover in the red zone, forcing a fumble. We recover it. I told the staff I was hugging Coach Janice so hard on that thing, I didn't even know where I was at, to be honest with you, uh, after we forced that fumble in the red zone to really get the ball back and, and, and pull away a little bit. And then finally, more. point gets on the board, 46-yard interception. Uh, and then Julian Gibbons, 68-yard fumble uh, recovery, but the final 35-13. Yep. So offense did extremely well, and as we'll talk to Coach Janish, defense didn't give up any touchdowns uh, based on, with their offense. Yeah, and you know the whole week they, our, our especially our defensive backs, had to hear about uh, how good their receiving core was, how their their offense is averaging these huge numbers over 500 yards of total offense a game, uh, how big they are up front, and really two things stood out. They were probably twice the size as we were, but but uh, we were twice as physical as they were uh, on that night. Our guys really played hard up front. Our secondary did just a phenomenal job. Their starting quarterback was one for 11 for three yards. Uh, to, that's unbelievable. And uh, they just, uh, I thought Coach Janice had a, a tremendous game plan up for them. Guys went out and executed. The offense stayed on rhythm. We had a couple special teams plays that helped help the offense out and keep pushing them forward with, with the fake punt to Cole and, and some of those kind of things. Felt pretty good. That's a, that's a total team win. A quick look at, uh, at UW-Eau Claire. Yep. Uh, this week, Shrine Game. Uh, fan, friends and family weekend, they uh, struggled mightily last week yep. against River Falls. Yeah, I mean, uh, we, saw, we found out last year uh, how, how big of a game this is for us. And uh, last year we went in, we had played really well against Whitewater in a loss, felt pretty good about ourselves, and came in and, and totally laid an egg uh, as a coaching staff, uh, number one, and, and then also as a team on that Saturday. Uh, in no way will we look past this game or move on from this game at all. Our guys know how important this is. Our coaching staff knows how important this is. To us, this is a conference championship game because we get a chance to play for first place in the league. Obviously, there's a, a, a rivalry with that, with the proximity, uh, with the, the early game and the things that go on with that. This is a big game for us. And, and really, our next step as a program is to find that consistency to play through an entire WIC season uh, and play our best games each week. Well, we're going to step aside just for a minute. When we return, we're going to talk more about UW-Eau Claire with defensive coordinator Matt Jan. We'll be right back. The all-new Honda Fit gives you the flexibility of the magic seat with the fuel efficiency you celebrate at the pump. From Honda Motor Works. you love more miles per dollar. Honda Motor Works.
Since 1897, Schilling Supply Company has been your single source provider of business solutions and supplies. Their 65,000 square foot facility stocks over 3,000 items ranging from packaging, janitorial, industrial, food processing, safety, and specialty products. Schilling Supply provides the essentials you need to meet your customers and employees' expectations. Businesses like Gunderson, Quick Trip, Dynamic Recycling, and Badger Corrugating rely on Schilling Supply to deliver the right products at the right time. Schilling Supply Company. Visit on the web or call. Stunning from any angle, the HRV is a crossover of style and versatility. You'll love more miles per dollar. Honda Motor Works. Welcome back to the Mike Schmidt Football Show. We're joined on the set with defensive coordinator uh, Matt Janish. I think, Coach, when you hired Matt, you hit a home run. Yeah, without a doubt we did. We knew that the whole time. I knew that the whole time. That was the guy that we were, we were waiting for and, and trying to get here. So uh, it's worked out really well so far. I know it'll keep, keep going like that. Um, I, here's a little, I, I do want to share a little funny story. I told Coach Janice on the way back that during the games, I feel like his conscience in, his, in, the, in the headsets, because I'm on the headsets with him, and I feel like I'm his conscience in there. Sometimes he'll be like, he's got a 50-50 call, whether he wants to bring a pressure or do something, they'll be like, should I bring it here? I'm like, yes, or no, you know, or, or run this. You know, like, I'm just kind of, I'm, I'm, I'm just like his con the other side of his conscience all the time, kind of in his ear with it, which is, which is fun. He's, he's, we're on the same page with what we want to do. Uh, with where we're trying to take this defense and uh, obviously Saturday night uh, shows exactly how much control he has on what we're doing. Well, let's step aside for a minute and go back to, before we went on the air, we talked about your two little uh, girls mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and Coach uh, Schmidt has two children too. And I know besides the dedication and the commitment and the team meetings and so on, you're all about family too. Yeah, it gets uh, a little tough during football season when the hours, uh, that you're away kind of become longer, um, but you always try to spend some time. Uh, Coach Schmidt kind of really gives us a good, does a good job of giving us like Sunday mornings that we get some time with our family and try to see them as much as I possibly can during the season. Well, the defense, bright spot for the defense overall before we break down the game against Point, you've, you've, you've held teams to 10 points a game. Whoa, I mean, you must, yeah. you're accomplishing all the goals that you've set so far in the early part of the season? Yeah, I think so. I mean, uh, right now our kids are, are really playing fast, and I think that was really a testament uh, yesterday, or I'm sorry, Saturday against Stevens Point uh, was how fast they were able to play and, and physical, and that brings, when, they're, when they can play fast, they play physical, they'll play with confidence too. Well, you obviously were well prepared in terms of breaking down film and putting together a scheme and a game plan. For those that uh, didn't know, Stevens Point uh, defense allowed the, uh, 13 points, you, your offense your defense did not allow any points, just their defense scored. And uh, they averaged 500 yards a game. You held them to 175, but even perhaps more important, they were five for six passing, six sacks. I mean, obviously your game plan worked to perfection. Yeah, I think, uh, like I said, it really starts with the back end. I know Coach Schmidt talked about it earlier uh, with Colton Neiman's uh, first play right off the bat, but uh, our, our back end did a phenomenal job. Our defensive backs, I thought our, our assistant coaches, uh, Coach Schmidt, Coach Lichty, Coach Brown, did a great job getting those guys ready to play. Um, it's, it's extremely awesome that I get a head coach that, that's willing to not only do special teams and all the stuff that comes with being a head coach, but he's also willing to step up and work with the back end too, and they do a, a phenomenal job up back there. Uh, and then we were able to get after them up front. You know, like we talked about how big they were, but we were able to use our speed, our quickness, and do some different games inside. But no one else is able to do that though. And uh, uh, the Tribune article talked about the tough matchup for UWL DBs versus their uh, electric receivers. Yet you didn't allow that though. What did you do differently than anyone else? You know, I think it starts with just, we were, I thought we played really physical. Uh, you know, at the corner position, the thing started with that, and then we were able to change up some different coverages and, and catch them into some different things. Well, good. So, and you kept Jerry Williams, a big play mm -hmm. uh, athlete. Did you do some things with uh, up, up and over? Did you cover double team him? What'd you do with him? Yeah, a little bit, you know, a little bit with that. Uh, obviously, you know, with his speed that, that he was able, but then we were also going to let, like we talked about earlier, letting our corners play fast and, and letting them go play football. In, in the paper, we dis it was discussed uh, some of the drills, one disruptive drill uh, where uh, Ryan Weber referenced it, that you do some things to 
disrupt the offense, cause fumbles, and so on. Mm -hmm. Can you share that with us? Yeah, we'll spend, I mean, really all of our individual uh, time that we get in practice for our position groups is spent on just making them, whether it's better defensive backs, uh, whether it's full technique for defense alignment, or we'll get into our ball, dis our, uh, ball disruption stuff, whether, uh, you know, teaching the different angles of where the ball is when the ball carrier is holding it um, and bringing that in and trying to drill that into their mentality. And like I said with Ryan, I mean, and it's not, obviously he gets the fumble in the red zone, but he's going after that ball uh, multiple times throughout the game. Well, Eau Claire brings another different picture. They, they struggled, uh, I think they're under 200 yards against River Falls. Their, uh, their offense, uh, distinct differences. What, what are you looking early on to do with a game plan? Yeah, it's definitely going to be different than Stevens Point. Um, you know, I think with that team with Eau Claire, everything's going to revolve around their quarterback. Uh, you know, JT, number 15, a uh, phenomenal athlete. He's a big kid. I think he's 6'3", 200 and almost 25 pounds, I think. Um, so it's going to be uh, taking him away from the run game. Uh, they're going to do some different things to try to keep him involved, whether it's reads or, or some cue power, um, being able to fit that stuff up and, and still continue to play fast on the back end. And then do you meet with uh, your position people to talk about a game plan, review tape of, uh, of, of the previous game, uh, the upcoming game, and are they involved in the game planning at all? Uh, like the players you're saying? Uh, the players, uh, we'll meet with them uh, at some point today uh, throughout the, in their position groups to go over the game and then kind of give a little um, introduction to, to UW Eau Claire. Um, then we'll come back tonight and really uh, show them, go through our scouting report um, and kind of give them the whole, the whole game plan. And then as we go throughout the week, we'll install uh, some more as we go. And I know, Coach, you're deeply involved in the defense too, even though you, you, uh, mm -hmm. you give him the autonomy to uh, create the defensive you schemes bet. and so on. Yeah, I, I, I have employed, and, and it's, it's a great working relationship, which is why I hired Matt. Matt's the only guy that I probably would have felt comfortable bringing in to, to call plays and set everything up because I know him, you know, and, and we, we're all on the same page with what we're trying to do and, and where we're trying to go. And, you know, the biggest change that, that Matt has brought for us, and it's a big shift, and really it's, it's part of this deal where we practice on Mondays is – it's about us and doing our stuff and trying to do our stuff in different ways better. And, and rather than installing a whole bunch of new things and new defenses and being wild and creative with that, let's just be really good at what we run. Let's get our guys ready to play that really fast. And it gives us the best opportunity to, to get our guys in the right spots. And that's been the biggest shift for us. And, and so Mondays are big on that. Like what are we, how are we going to run our scheme against this? And how are we going to get our guys ready to run our stuff? I know you've been blessed with some really good defensive coaches too that – uh, that our position uh, have a gift in certain positions, and they they assist with putting together the game plan too, right? Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, I kind of talked about our, our defensive backs and, and the coaches back there, but then we also have uh, Vinny Whipple, who's going to work linebackers with me, and uh, he does a phenomenal job of you know taking care of all the breakdown data. Him along with Brandon Gaston on our defense line and Coach King on our defense line, they do a phenomenal job of taking care of all the breakdown things, the little things. Um, and sometimes I'm not always clear, especially with Coach Whip and, and Coach Gaston. Sometimes I'm not always clear, and they got to kind of <laughs> interpret things from me. Um, but they do a phenomenal job, and really they're the part of the, the defense staff that really nobody sees, but they're such a big, uh, have such a big impact on what we do. Together, everyone accomplishes more. You got it. You know that one, right, you Coach? got it. All right, that's an acronym I really like. Well, anyway, you, you've done a great job, and we appreciate what you're doing for UWL, Eagle Football and being on the show. So thank you. Thank you. Appreciate All right, we'll be, when we come back, we're going to talk to two players, a big part of the success of a 4-0 Eagle football team. Right after this. The all-new Honda Fit gives you the flexibility of the magic seat with the fuel efficiency you celebrate at the pump. From Honda Motor Works. You'll love more miles per dollar. Honda Motor Works.
Since 1897, Schilling Supply Company has been your single source provider of business solutions and supplies. Their 65,000 square foot facility stocks over 3,000 items ranging from packaging, janitorial, industrial, food processing, safety, and specialty products. Schilling Supply provides the essentials you need to meet your customers' and employees' expectations. Businesses like Gunderson, Quick Trip, Dynamic Recycling, and Badger Corrugating rely on Schilling Supply to deliver the right products at the right time. Schilling Supply Company. Visit on the web or call. Stunning from any angle, the HRV is a crossover of style and versatility. You love more miles per dollar. Honda Motor Works. Welcome back to the Mike Schmidt Football Show. Well, we're joined on the set with two stars from this past weekend's win over Stevens Point. Cole Speaker, a 6'2 tight end from Brainerd, Minnesota, and everyone knows this guy from home, and Noah Risch, a six-foot senior. Coach, read about these guys, watched them play earlier in the year. Are they up to your standards? Yeah, they sure are. Uh, I do feel like that, I, I think you're right, that, that Noah's probably one of the faces of the Cooley region. Uh, so, you know, just a, a love, pretty lovable guy uh, there. But uh, in all seriousness about Noah, uh, he's, he's just one of my favorites of all time uh, that I've ever coached. Um, I, I, I talk to his parents a lot and I, I tell them how I'm, I'm like almost counting down the days that I get to be with them. It's kind of a, a special deal. I, I just love this senior class and, and he's one of those guys that uh, love coaching. And uh, I'm, I'm sad already, even though we're just in the middle of the season, <laughs> I'm sad already that that uh, their time's going to be done and he's one of them. And I just love coaching and love being around. So him. like a surrogate son. Yeah, I guess. Uh, yeah, I think more like a, a fun uncle. I oh, like yeah. myself uh, with it. Well, uh, don't forget about the guy yeah, next to you, yeah, too. You I, like no, him, too, and, don't and Cole, you? I mean, Cole was one of those guys that when Coach Landry got here and, and when we got here that, that first spring, and he was out for, for spring practice, we're like, well, that guy's moving the tight end and he's going to be a great player. You know, it was like, that's a no-brainer here for how we can use this guy. It's, he's the prototypical guy for what we need to do in that position. He does everything well. Incredibly athletic guy. One of the fastest guys on our team. Probably one of the faster guys in the league uh, overall, and he does it at his size. So, uh, a phenomenal player. There's a lot more really good days coming for this guy and here, a, too. And a Rob Gonzalez lookalike. Yeah, too. sure. Yeah, you bet. <laughs> Well, speaking of Cole Speaker, a tight end from Brainerd, way up north, I imagine you were a star in high school? Uh, kind of. Uh, I played receiver, and they, we, kind of, we were more of a run team, but like when, when they used me, they'd, I'd go deep and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Try to take the cup off the defense. So, but you didn't block, you just ran routes yeah, up when you were up there? Yeah, it wasn't much of a block in high school. <laughs> <laughs> so, Take us through the recruiting process, and we're going to talk about your game. But you are way up there, uh, and you must have choices where to go. Uh, a little bit. Uh, I, lacrosse actually didn't like recruit me. I sent my film in first just because it's like five hours away. It wasn't really in their area. And then I just like, like the campus and stuff. And that's fine. A hidden gem, Coach. Yeah, you, 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 you always want to get lucky on some guys like this where they kind of find you. Uh, you know, there's plenty of guys that we have to go out and find all the time, but uh, we don't ever, uh, we'll never not take responsibility for having a guy kind of find us and fall into our lap, too. That's always a good deal. Everybody in the Cooley region was hoping uh, when Noah Risch graduated from Holman that he would come to UWL. And, and word has it that th there was nothing else on, uh, uh, on his agenda, immediately an Eagle. Is that correct? Go Eagles, yeah. That's how it <laughs> went down. No, I, uh, I didn't really, I was between here and I thought about just for school going to Madison. I've always been a big Badger fan. Uh, and I decided I, you know, I love football, I want to play football uh, close down the road. And I kind of know lacrosse and it was a perfect fit. And I'm so glad that I chose to come here. And I know your family real well too. And, Let's kind of go back down memory lane. Who inspired you to, to put in your mind, someday I want to be a collegiate football player? Uh, I think I always, in the back of my mind, had that. My, uh, my grandpa was a huge role model for me. He was a star ba baseball athlete. I always looked up to him and my dad. And then uh, as I got to go through high school a little bit, Jason Luloff over at the high school, I was my wrestling coach. And uh, my freshman year, I was a little tubby little guy. And, I mean, I was pretty good at football, but I uh, wasn't really anything special. And 
he, he said, you know, if you want to be good and make an impact on the football team, you should join wrestling. And uh, that really helped me a lot. Um, I always thank him. You know, he's a, been a great, he's been there for me and, uh, you know, working hard through that. And that's really made a difference in my life. In case you're wondering, you're no longer a little tubby guy, by the way. And uh, ask, no. the, ask the offenses uh, that you play against and they'll, they'll, they can answer that yeah, one. Yeah, no doubt. <laughs> So, and uh, Cole, when you were younger, I'm sure you thought, oh, someday I'm going to be an Eagle, but you didn't even know where lacrosse was, and then you found it. Yep. Somebody inspired you. Uh, yeah, it was definitely my father who inspired me just to work hard throughout, like, my football career and, like, in middle school. In ninth grade, I was actually, like, the smallest kid on our football team, weighing <laughs> at, like, 130. <laughs> and then, then my dad got me in the weight room, and he always pushed me, throw routes to me in the backyard. Geez, you were a Kenyan runner then when you were 130 <laughs> pounds and about six foot two. Well, two TDs this season, uh, including a big one, which we talked about early in the show, a 12-yard pass uh, at uh, Stevens Point. And uh, when they called your number or you were part of the progression, you thought, whoa, this is my chance? Yeah. Uh, Coach Landry is doing a great job and just like, Mixing me up everywhere to try to create a mismatch and ended up being on a like, corner, smaller corner. So then we threw up, a, threw it up, and I just made the play like I'm supposed to. A hybrid between an offensive lineman and a receiver. Strength, uh, blocking, uh, speed, agility, good hands, being able to detach from the defense, running routes. Does he have all that, Coach? Yeah, for sure. Uh, I mean, that we saw that right away, that he was going to become – uh, he was going to be able to put some weight on, get some, gain some weight, and, and get a lot more physical, which he did a great job of last year, all throughout the, the, the season, really. And, and it's funny because both of these guys are kind of hybrids. Uh, Noah's a, a, a big linebacker, big physical linebacker that, that probably in a lot of different places would be, be playing some version of a stand-up defensive end uh, for some team out there. But that's not really what we're, how we want to use him. We had thrown that around, but he's too good of a linebacker for us to give up. You know, when we, we did move, uh, Zach Zilmer moved down and starting as a stand-up defensive event for us and uh, obviously Brandon McCandis what a season that guy's having uh, the last couple games phenomenal uh, you know they're they're smaller than Noah so we got a linebacker that's actually much bigger than than two of our defensive ends so kind of a couple hybrids up here uh, which that's what we got to do that's how we got to play well in case you didn't know from Holman of course Noah all Wyack in 15 and 16 uh, started all 10 games last year uh, he's had 13 tackles so far this year and uh, has all the uh, qualities of a linebacker. Uh, like Coach Chris used to say, he arrives at the ball in a bad mood. Yep. Is that you? Uh, well, I'm a pretty happy guy. But, <laughs> but I suppose that's how you'd want to play with a little bit more of goals a chip for, on your shoulder. Goals for the season. Where, where are you going to be at the end of the year? Undefeated. We're going to be playing. You know, that's, that's the goal. I, 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 people always ask me about individual goals and like this last week, and I had, I had one tackle against Stevens Point, and I don't really, I don't really care because it was one of the most fun games I've played in uh, in college, probably the most fun. Uh, so I, I don't really care if I have another tackle if we continue to win and play the way we've been playing. Well, and and we hope that you go all the way too, because then we can travel down to wherever <laughs> it's at and, and, and uh, film the game. Well, you guys have done extremely well. We're proud of you to say the least. We wish you the best uh, along the way. Coach, what else is happening uh, on campus? Yeah, a couple other things going on uh, in the in the Eagle world right now. A big win for the soccer team over the weekend. Volleyball continues to play well. Volleyball gets a little break uh, in conference play and, and play some some non-conference games while soccer is at Platteville uh, on Wednesday. And then uh, uh, the soccer team hosts River Falls uh, right after our game. A little double header to come out to at the at the Memorial, the Veterans Memorial Complex out there in Roger Herring Stadium. Come check out our game 1130. Stick around, grab the soccer game at 330. Well, what a weekend. That's, that's, that's going to be you on my me? schedule. Yeah, absolutely. Me All too. Right. All right. Well, we hope you enjoyed the Mike Schmidt Football Show here on KQEG. We want to quickly recognize our sponsors, Schilling Supply, Schumacher Kiss Funeral Homes, Honda Motor Works, the Alpine Inn and Associated Bank as well as our friends here at the Entertainment Cafe. We'll be here each week. Next week, talk about UW-Eau Claire. Get ready for the next game. And remember, it replayed every Tuesday at 6.30. Till next week, I'm your host, Terry Erickson, thanking you for joining us here on the Mike Schmidt Football Show. There you go, guys. You've been watching the Mike Schmidt Football Show on KQEG-TV. The Mike Schmidt Football Show is brought to you by Honda Motor Works, your electric, natural gas, and hybrid vehicle headquarters at 4th and Cass Lacrosse.
by Schilling Supply, serving businesses with critical supplies since 1897. Schumacher Kish Funeral and Cremation Services in La Crosse, La Crescent, and Onalaska. And Associated Bank. Experience the better side of banking at Associated Bank. Join us next week at this same time for the Mike Schmidt Football Show.